Welcome to the second video in the series where we build an AI podcast app. At this point, we've set up Next.js and we can access our dev server, which shows us this Next.js boilerplate code. Now at this point, you might be tempted to open up your agent, give it your requirements and let it do its thing. But in this series, I really want to teach you the best principles for getting the most out of Agenti coding. So in this video, we'll purely focus on building the user interface and setting our project up for success. The mistake a lot of people make, especially Vibe coders, is to give a very simple prompt to the agent describing their app and expecting to get good results. In reality, it's best to build each component step by step, starting with the user interface. By building the user interface first using mock data, we can very quickly get a feel for what our app would look like and what the user experience would be. If we try to build everything in one go, so the user interface or the backend logic and everything else, it becomes very hard to pivot if we want to change anything in the app. Enough talk, let's build this. Now that we have our basic project set up and we've got an idea of what the core components of our app should be, I highly recommend document everything within the project. A lot of people skip this step, but I can't recommend it enough. In the root of your project, simply create a new folder and call it docs. The files in this folder won't affect the project in any way, but we can put any context in this folder that our agents might need to build our application. And the more detailed we are, the better the results will be. Within docs, I like to create two subfolders, business, and technical. We could even create another folder called inspiration, but we'll get back to that one a bit later on. Within business, let's create a file called overview.md. And here we can describe all the core components of our application. So I like to create a heading called overview. And in here we can describe our app like, this is an AI podcast generation app that converts a URL into a natural sounding podcast audio file. So we could have another section called core features. And in here we can have subheadings for each of these main components, like scrape website, generate conversation, and generate podcast audio. And because we've already done a bit of research for each of these components, in fact, they off to the side here, we can document everything we know so far in this file as well. So on the scrape website, we could say, the user enters a URL and we then use Firecrawl to extract the website content. On the generate conversation, we can say, the app then uses the AI SDK and we'll use OpenAI's GPT-5 Mini as the model to create a conversation between two hosts discussing the scraped content. As a reminder, we already discussed the tech stack in the first video, but if you have absolutely no idea how to figure out what the tech stack should be, you could use your agent in planning mode to suggest different platforms. Either way, it's a good idea to document all of this because when we start a new conversation with the agent, we simply want to pull in this context so the agent knows exactly how this app works. Then under generate audio, what we can say is, use the 11 Labs SDK to generate the dialogue from the conversation text. And it's really as simple as this. We now have a file that gives all the initial context to build our application. I do want to give you some agent specific tips here. If you are using cursor, what you can do is copy all of this content, then go to file, preferences and cursor settings. Go to rules and memories, then create a new project rule and call it project overview, select always apply and then paste in all of that context. This means that whenever you start a conversation with an agent in Cursor, this project context will automatically be included in the conversation. If you are using Claude code, simply create a new file called claude.md and paste in all of that context. Or if you're using something like Codex, they use something called an agents file and paste in all of that context as well. And if you're using anything else, you can simply look up their way of using memories, or you can simply manually grab this business overview file. It will have the exact same effect. Now we can build our user interface. In this video, I will be using agents to code the solution. 
And whether you're using Cursor, Claude Code, Codex, Gemini, CLI, it really doesn't matter. You can follow along with any coding agent. But in this tutorial, I'll actually give GPT-5 Codex a chance as the model was only released yesterday and I've been dying to check it out. But of course, you can follow along with any coding agent that you want. So I'm going to open up a new terminal and run Codex. So just to expand this a bit, I'm currently using GPT-5 Codex on high mode. By the way, if you're new to Codex and you want to follow along, all you have to do is open up a new terminal session, then run the command npm install g at openai slash codex. Then afterwards, simply run codex and you will be asked to sign into your OpenAI account or provide an API key to use the service. All right, so within codex, you can enter front slash model and I'll be using the new GPT-5 codex model on high mode. I'm just going to rename this terminal to codex and then this one we're using for the dev server. So I'll rename it to dev server. Now let's think about this user interface. One way to start is to use another website as inspiration for your application. Our podcast generator is very similar to Notebook LM from Google. Effectively on the left hand side, we provide a source. And in our case, that will be a URL. In the middle section that contains all the scraped content and on the right, we have all these different options to play the podcast, create a mind map, and a lot more. Now, we don't want to copy this exactly, but I think we can pull some inspiration from this. So what we can do is screenshot everything that we like on this page, and we can then save that screenshot within the inspirations folder in our project. I'm actually going to rename this to Notebook LM. Don't be afraid to build out this docs folder. If you find something you like, or if you find any articles or example code, add it to this folder as well. Then what we can say is, please create the UI for our AI podcast application. It should follow a similar design to Notebook LN. And I've attached a screenshot for your reference. So what we can do now is simply grab this inspiration image and add it to the chat. You don't have to copy the design exactly, but I do like the three column design. On the left, the user should be able to provide a URL. In the middle section, the user should see the conversation between two hosts discussing the scraped content. Limit this to about 10 rounds. So this will be 10 messages back and forth. Each message should show the host's name and text. On the right, there should be a play button, pause button, and a restart audio button. Now, because we're only focusing on the UI at this stage, let's also say, please use mock data and focus on the UI and UX. And I think that's it. Let's send this and let's see what we get back. All right, cool. The agent is done. And if we look at the app, this looks really cool. We have a beautiful heading section. We've got a couple of buttons at the top here. And we have our three different sections. So on the left, we can provide a URL and click on fetch. And in the center, we have the host dialogue. So these back and forth messages. And on the right, we do indeed have our play button, pause button, and our restart button. And our app seems to be responsive on smaller screen sizes as well. All right, cool. So what we can do now is simply have a look at our UI. And if there's anything we don't like, we can prompt the agent to make changes. And since it's all using dummy data, we don't have to worry about adapting the APIs or server actions or anything on the back end at this stage. So at this point, I'm going to create a checkpoint. This means that if we make any breaking changes going forward, we can always revert back to this current state. Or for all the developers looking at this, we'll simply create a commit. So in source control, all we'll say is something like UI and create basic UI. Let's commit this. And now in our version control, we can easily revert back to this state. Now I don't want to end the video there. I do want to show you how to build really unique UIs using Next.js. At this stage, the agent created custom styling and components for this application. But there's another solution that's extremely popular and can give you exceptional results. And that is to use ShadCN. I'm sure a lot of you know what ShadCN is, but for everyone else, 
it's basically a component library that you can use in your Next.js applications. It provides all of these beautiful components out of the box. And in fact, if we go to the components page, we can see all the different components. And if we open up any of these, like, like this accordion component, we can see exactly what this looks like and how to add it to our project. So to set up CN, what we can do is click on get started. Because we're using Next.js, let's click on Next.js. Let's copy this install command and in our project, let's run that command. Then let's select neutral for the color. We will change this in a minute. And now that we've installed ShadCN, we can start using it in our application. This also means I no longer want the agent to make up its own components. I want to force it to use ShadCN components going forward. We can enforce these rules by adding it to our agent's memory file. Again, this will depend on which coding agent you're using. For cursor, it will be a rule. For Claude code, it will be the Claude file. But for codex, it will be this agent's file. So in that file, add a section called important rules. Then let's say, always use ShadCN components over custom components. Never create the components yourself. Always install them using, and now back in ShadCN, I'm just going to grab an example from any of these buttons, like this command to install the button. The install command and I'll just give an example. And there we go. Always use standard talent and chat C in colors. Never use custom inline colors. The reason for this is chat CN gives you a lot of standard colors out of the box and they're very easy to customize. But sometimes these agents will add their own custom styling in the wrong place and it totally messes up the look and feel. So now that we've got this rule in place, I'll go back to Codex and let's say, please use ShadCN components in our app. Let's run this. Now this is exactly what you want to see in your to-do list. It's saying it's going to install the required ShadCN components using pnpm dlx. That's the ShadCN install command. And this is awesome. We can see the agent called the ShadCN install command and it added the following components a button, card, input, label, badge, scroll area, and progress. And now it's refactoring the home page to use those components. Okay, cool, the agent is done, and our app was now redesigned to use standard chat CN components. Now currently this is using light mode, so I am going to change it to use dark mode by default. So I'm just going to tell the agent to please default to dark mode. And that gives us this design. Now at this stage, we're very much using the vanilla colors that comes with ShadCN, but we can greatly improve this. In the description, you'll find the link to tweak CN. Click on try it now. And from here, we can greatly customize the look and feel of our app. What we can do is click on themes, or if it's your first time accessing this app, you should be on the default template which very much looks exactly like our application. I think I'm going to go with this tangerine design. So this design over here. You can also see what this would look like in both dark and light modes. You can also change the typography like the fonts. And under other, you can change things like the roundedness of these cards. So if we change this, you'll see the roundedness adjusting as I'm moving this. Once you're happy with your design, what you can do is click on code, then copy all of this. And back in your project, you can ask the agent to make this change for you, or you can simply go to source, then app and globals. I'm just going to hide codex for a second. And what we can do here is collapse inline, root and dark. And let's replace all of these sections. So I'm going to delete them and paste in everything that we just copied. When I save this, our app looks very different. Now that we have our perfect UI, it's a good idea to create another commit. So under source control, let's say UI final design. Let's commit this. And I think now would be a good time to move on to the next phase of our application. And that is to implement the web crawling functionality. I'll see you in the next video.